Uh, this is Bob Oliphant. I write the museum musings column that appears in the Westford Eagle Independent uh, every week on behalf of the Westford Museum and Historical Society. Uh, I, I've been doing this since January 2008, and since that time, most of the column, um, and most weeks it's all of the column, is uh, a list, is a, an extract from the Westford Wardsman newspaper from 100 years ago. And we, we would th thought we would try a podcast, and I'll read uh, a number of uh, extracts from the Westford Wardsman over the years. Uh, I'd, I'd like to start with the 1908, uh, uh, January 1908 Westford Wardsman and go from there. But before I get into that, I wanted to say a few words about just what the Westford Wardsman is. We think of it as being the Westford paper of 100 years ago, and that's true in a sense, but that's not the complete story. The Westford Wardsman was really a part of Turner's public spirit that was published Saturday in air. And it was uh, founded by a guy named John Henry Turner around uh, 19, 1868 or 69. And he had the bright idea, a brilliant idea, I think, of getting correspondence in all the surrounding towns and having them submit articles that he would consolidate into a little subpaper of his Turner's public spirit for each town. And he gave names to those uh, papers such as the Westford Wardsman, the Harvard Hillside, the Littleton Guidon, the Groton Landmark, etc. The, uh, there were eight or ten uh, separate little papers within Turner's Public Spirit, and so Westford, the Westford paper was just one of those. The Westford paper actually started uh, around November of 1905, and it was first called or referred to as the Westford Wardsman in January of 1906, uh, we uh, at the Westford Museum got microfilm of the newspaper that started in 1908. So in 2008, I started writing a, a column for the Westford Eagle at that time, and I've continued to do that uh, through the years. So that's what I will read eventually. The Westford uh, Wardsman contains uh, various sections. Uh, there's a uh, center section uh, that's written by a correspondent who lived in Westford Center. The about town section that's, that's been written for, I, th I think, since it started by a man named Samuel L. Taylor, who uh, takes uh, anything that comes to his mind, I think, for, for a subject matter. And he's, he's the one that provides most of the humor in the Westford Wardsman. And then there are separate uh, correspondence for Graniteville and also for Forge Village. The, the 100 years ago, it was an interesting time in both Westford and in the country. Uh, there, it, it was a, a, a time when Westford was increasing in population uh, quite a bit. Uh, the, the population increased from 48, some 48 percent between 1900 and 1920, and of course most of that was prior to 1914 when World War I intervened. And the increase was due primarily to the growth of the textile industry in the form of the Abbott Worsted Company and C.G. Sargent's uh, textile manufacturing, machinery uh, manufacturing company, uh, which drew in people from uh, Canada, Scotland, England, uh, Poland, uh, Ireland, uh, a number of different European countries. Sweden was another one. The, uh, it was also a, a time of great change. Uh, the, the horse and buggy was being replaced by the automobile. Uh, electric cars, as they were called, or we would call them trolleys, were introduced and then began to f fade away over that this time period of the Westford Wardsman. Uh, uh, primarily because of the increase in the use of the automobile. Trains ran through town daily on three different railroad lines, stopping at eight different railroad stations. Um, modern uh, utilities were introduced, uh, uh, like town water, electricity, the telephone, and of course, uh, several worldwide events, such as World War I, which began in 1914, although the U.S. didn't get into it until 1917, and, and that's when it really begins to appear in the uh, Westford Wardsman. And the uh, 
the great influenza epidemic of 1918 uh, had a severe effect on Westford. It closed schools and churches, and several prominent uh, people from Westford uh, were succumbed to the influenza, and um, you, most of them around October of 1918. But we'll get to all that later. I wanted to uh, say a, a few words about uh, the founder of the the wardsman, John Henry Turner, whose, whose father was also John Henry T Turner. He died in 1917, and there was a nice obituary for him in the Turner's Public Spirit, and I'd like to read from that. John Henry Turner, the founder of Turner's Public Spirit and one of the oldest and best known editors in this section of the country, died at his home on Prospect Street Monday, June 4, 1917, uh, at 2.30 of valvular heart disease. Although he had been in feeble health for about six months, the end came very unexpectedly. Mr. Turner was up and about the house up to within a short time of his death. Mr. Turner was a descendant of an ancient English family, a son of John Turner, who was born in Camberwell, now within the limits of London, England, about 1809. He was educated in his native place and was interested at various times in many different trades and kinds of business. He was proprietor of a stage line from Camberwell to London and was also the owner and keeper of one of the historic old inns of London. He removed to Montreal, Canada in 1832 and died there in 1871. His wife died in 1886. In 1831, he married Marianne Hicks of London, daughter of William and Marianne Hicks. They had eight children born in Canada, two of whom are now living. John Henry Turner, the subject of this sketch, was born on December 15, 1835, in Montreal, Canada, where he was educated in the common schools and at St. Teresa College, which he attended for two years. After leaving college, he was employed for a number of years in various mercantile establishments. He later learned the printer's trade and worked for two years in the printing offices in Montreal. Leaving that center, uh, city, he went to New York City, where he was employed at his trade for two years. Leaving New York, Mr. Turner traveled extensively throughout the southern and western states in the pursuit of his occupation. In 1859, he engaged in the printing business in Hartford, Connecticut, with two fellow tradesmen under the firm name of Williams, Wiley, and Turner. The firm was dissolved at the outbreak of the Civil War, and Mr. Turner came to Groton, uh, Massachusetts, to live. He, to live. he in, entered the employ of the famous printing concern, the University Press of Cambridge, where he worked for a time. Later, he was associated with his father-in-law, George H. Brown of Groton, a well-known printer. In June 1865, Mr. Turner started a printing business on his own. In uh, 1869, he started a newspaper known for a few years as the Groton Public Spirit. Later, the name of the publication was changed to Turner's Public Spirit, of which he was editor until the time of his death. The, we should note that uh, it, is, it, it became the, it was published in Air, and at the time that it was formed, Air was in what was known as South Groton or Groton Junction, and it wasn't uh, a, a separate town until 1871 when Air was formally established. Uh, in, in connection with newspaper work, Mr. Turner for 23 years conducted a job printing business, which he transferred to his son, Huntley Turner, in 1888, which has continued successfully until the present time, being known as one of the largest and best known in this section. In January 1911, owing to advanced years and a desire to be relieved in his work, he transferred the active management of the newspaper to his son, George H.B. Turner the elder Mr. Turner continuing his duties as editor until his death. Mr. Turner belonged to the old school of printers, which is rapidly passing away in this age of specialization. He was a splendid example of the all-round editor-printer 
and his acquaintance with famous members of the craft was extended. Among his acquaintances in newspaper work were Horace Greeley, the famous editor of the New York Tribune, the elder James Gordon Bennett, a former noted editor of the New York Herald, and Charles A. Dana, editor of the New York Sun, as well as many famous writers of those days. He was the oldest member of St. Paul Lodge of Masons and was a member of Harvard Lodge IOOF, that's the International Order of Odd Fellows, for many years, giving up his membership in that organization years ago. He was also one of the first members of the old Colonel Needham Engine Company of this place, which was used for, the, for firefighting purposes until the introduction of the waterworks when the old machine was put aside. It is still kept in repair and used occasionally for fires outside the town water limits. He was also a member of one of the old volunteer fire companies in New York City. Mr. Turner was one of the oldest, oldest members of St. Andrew's Church in Ayer. Uh, St. Andrew's was the Episcopal Church in Ayer and the Father Church of uh, St. Mark's in Westford. He was a useful and honored citizen standing well in the business community and having the esteem of all his townsmen. With a very few exceptions, he was the oldest in years and service in any businessman of any businessman in town. On September 10, 1861, Mr. Turner married Miss Helen Mitchell Brown, who was born on January 2, 1841 in Bridgewater, the daughter of George Henry Brown of that place a printer and the publisher and proprietor of the Amaranth magazine. Mr. Turner leaves his widow, two sons, Huntley and George Turner, a daughter uh, and four grandchildren, all of heir, and two sisters. The funeral took place on Thursday afternoon with services at St. Andrew's Church at 1.30, which were conducted by Reverend William G. Thayer, Doctor of Divinity, Headmaster of St. Mark's School, Southboro, a former vicar of St. Patrick's Parish, Mr. Thayer was assisted by Reverend Williston M. Ford, the present vicar. After the services, the remains were taken to Forest Hills for cremation. The interment, an interment will, will be in Groton Cemetery. Uh, that's, the end, that's pretty much the end of the obituary. So that gives you a little background on how Westford Wardsman got started. And in uh, future versions of this podcast, we'll talk about uh, or we'll read specific excerpts from the Westford Wardsman. Thank you.